Someone standing over her bed. Ah! <laughs> A being we've seen before. Because that, just as Johnny, was also a goldling. Wake up. It's just a dream. Wake up. I don't think she's waking up. The doll. The attic. You really should put on something less revealing. All right. Time to check the attic. Put it down, please. That's blood. Don't spill it. Please. So, we're pointed towards the attic. Stop. Go away. Leave it. So we have two doors in here. First one leads towards the attic, so I'm going to check out the other one as well. And there's more loot to find in here. And we can hear the godling giggling as well. So let's get up there. Oh god, his eyeballs. Wait, the next room's blocked. So there's something in the way, but nothing a good use of art can solve. And again, loot central, so give me a second. So we found a doll. The doll, the doll in the attic, as Corinne told us, but that's not all, there's also a drawing of a crib and when we examine the drawing you see just a childlike drawing of a crib with a baby in it so there was nothing a crib special on the second floor wonder what would happen if i laid a doll in it so Gerald again has a wondrous idea Place the doll that we found into the cradle Stop. over here. Go away! Don't do that. Leave it. And the one we jumped over to get to the, the closet. I love how they uh, put the color back when uh, we're in a cutscene. Because I was afraid of that. Okay, so there's the door's closed, and there's another drawing here. Another masterpiece. An oven and a blackened grate. No oh joy. A riddle. Guess I should find an oven. So, since we already went through the entire house except for the cellar, we can only assume that that oven is actually down here. There is a ladder here. Okay, there we go. Cat is almost out. So this is the oven. Let's check it out. So it's not a cave in the swamp, but it really looks like Johnny's lair. Hello. Did I scare you? Yeah, scared you're hilarious. I could tell you were scared. Big brave man scared of wee little Sarah. Ain't that funny? I wouldn't do that anymore if I were you, Sarah. You might scare someone so bad they'll hurt you. Why would someone hurt me? Having a spot of fun's not allowed anymore. What are you playing? That lady fell asleep, and I've sent her some horrible dreams. Or not her wake, neither. I can do that, you know. Funny, isn't it? Very yeah. funny. Great. Thing is, I gotta talk to the dreamer. So I'd like you to let her wake up. Little Sarah doesn't want her to wake. Little Sarah wants to play. Okay. You're lucky. I know you're a harmless godling, but others might not know, and then... And I 
you know I'm a godling, eh? Else that, eh? Eh? If it looks like one and acts like one, trust me, you're a godling. You give the dreamer nightmares and won't let her wake up. Why are you tormenting her? I'm not tormenting anyone. Scary dreams are great. What I love is when this big hen chases me. Hen's got these red. Why do you live in a haunted house? <laughs> Tell you a secret. <laughs> the house ain't haunted. Not one bit. I just pretend it is. Make everyone think that. It was sitting there all empty. So I moved in. Bigwig from the bank then came and bought it. I don't like bankers, especially not to live with. So I decided to give him a scare. <laughs> Gave the banker a really big scare. See, he paid a lot for this house and won't give it up easily, which is why you need to find another home. I don't want to! I don't! I won't! I wonder where she would find a new home. She was lucky enough to find this place, but... Okay, let's make a deal. Sarah, Novigrad's no place for a godling. But if you want to live here, that's your business. So let's make a deal. A deal? What kind? Leave the dreamer alone. In exchange, I'll tell the banker the house is haunted. For good, no way to lift the curse. You tell him that? What if he doesn't believe you? I'm a witcher. He'll believe me. And I can be very yes. persuasive. Yes! Do that and I promise not to bother your friend. Not even a little. You're awfully nice, you know. I don't hear that often. Thanks. Yeah, now thanks. Now go wake that sleepyhead. I won't stop her. She'll get up. Okay, great. But there's also something special here. This wall can be blown open. And then there's a small little elven cave, I think. The architecture seems to fit, so... There's a lot of nice stuff in here as well. Especially gems, so don't forget to check in here. It can be easily missed. Okay, thank you Geralt. So let's get back up. That was something in my ear. And she's still giggling. But let's go wake up Kareen. Oh, she's already awake apparently. Who are you? Triss Marigold sent me to see you. Gods. Horrible nightmares. I was supposed to dream the history of this house. Instead I saw furniture. Hungry furniture that wished to devour me. I know it must sound foolish. But in the dream, well, it was all too real, and not at all amusing. The work of a godling. She made people believe the house was haunted. Also injected your dreams with her little jokes. And you managed to wake me. I feel fortunate. We witchers have our ways. You should. Oh, thank you. Very much. The dreams, they were awful. Any way I can pay you back? There is, actually. I'm looking for a young woman who was seen in Novigrad. I can certainly try to help, but I'll need to clear my head first. After those deranged dreams, I feel it's full of cobwebs. Find me at the Golden Sturgeon. I rent a room there. All right. See you there. Goodbye, Kareem. See you later. So now we can go there immediately, but of course we promised the godling that we would tell uh, Rudolf the young here that his house is actually really haunted. So let's go do that first. Hello, sir. I saw Miss Corrine leave, but she refused to speak to me. Is the matter resolved? Or quite the opposite? Hmm. Well, the house is haunted. Sorry, man. A bit of both. A demon had captured Corrine. I managed to free her, but the house is still haunted. Did Corrine dream of the building's past? Yeah. Pretty horrid, apparently, though she refused to talk about it. Nobody should inhabit the place. So many crowns I paid! Oh, well. It shan't put me in the poorhouse. Well, good for everyone, then. Okay. So now we'll head towards the Golden Sturgeon, which is, I think, an inn. Shady individual. Hello! 
Okay, there's a line of rats going around here. I think they're a bit too close to be realistic. <laughs> okay. They must be order. This is weird. Where are they going? I'm gonna follow them. Okay. Well, that's something. Okay, bye rats. So, the golden sturgeon. This is a pretty big inn. Certainly, if we compare it with the ones that we've seen already. Several forts, so uh, let's go find Corrine's room. And. Oh, she's dressed. Okay, hello, Corrine. A dream in here. Just kidding. Never witnessed a seance like this before, let alone participated. I will guide you. You must first achieve a kind of mental accord. I must ask some questions, you must answer them. It's important you're truthful. Answer from your heart. Okay. Your gift. Tell me how it works. It's hard to describe. To start with, I must gain an understanding of the bond between the person and the object I'm to dream about. I ask questions. Try to flesh out feelings, emotions. Truth is essential in this. And though most who come to me acknowledge that, many refuse to speak openly of certain matters. Apart from which, they remain unaware of others, further obscuring things. What do you see in your dreams? I don't. It's my client who sees. My gift lies in summoning the right dreams. At times, nightmares or strong desires impose themselves on true events. It takes skill to separate seed from chaff. Okay. Let's try this then. Let's begin. To start with... Tell me a memory you have of this woman. What for? Do as I ask, please. I need the strongest, Geralt, be most fruitful. memory you have of... Siri. The woman's name is Siri. Hmm. There's a lot to this. And I think the most intense... will be the first, of course. I accepted a job once. Did it. Asked to choose my reward, I invoked the law of surprise. As I mentioned before. Never thought I'd actually meet the child promised to me at that time. Years later, I was in the Broccolon Forest. Happened on a girl there. Didn't know who she was. The Dryads wanted to keep her, turn her into one of their own. But the waters of oblivion, they failed in her case. Siri came out of Broccolon with me. I sent her back to her grandmother then. But already, I felt bound to her. By destiny. By something yep. more. With a capital D. Thank you. Would you be willing to share another memory? Well, now that we're on the case, I might as well let him explain everything. So, you, the viewer, are also aware of every, any history between Siri and Geralt, just in case yes. you haven't read the books. No need to rush. We have time. So then the training happened at Kermor. Siri was orphaned during the Second War with Nilfgaard. I had no idea what to do with a young girl. So I did what I would have done with a boy and took her to Kermorin. Figured some physical training, sword work, development of her stamina couldn't hurt. I remember her standing on a crumbling wall. A stone came loose. She lost her footing. Caught her at the last possible instant. Strongest memory, though, is of her coming out of her room one day, wearing a dress and claiming she was indisposed. That was a Knew hilarious bit in the book. Maturing. It was unavoidable. I was lost in the face of that. I see. Do you wish to tell me anything more? Triss was at Garamoran at that time as well, and, uh, well, the Witchers got their part. She was pretty mad at them for not uh, realizing Siri could uh, 
well, be indisposed, as Geralt put it. Yes, I think so. In that case, I'm listening. So, we saved her life, well, more than once, but hey. It was after her time training at Kaer Morhen. After the moment when Yennefer first called Ciri her daughter. We'd been separated. I knew she was in danger. I dreamt of her multiple times. I found her at Stiga Castle. She'd gone there to free Yen and gotten herself captured in the process. They wanted to hurt her. I remember fighting side by side with Ciri on stairs slippery from blood. It was the first time she ever deflected a crossbow bolt with her sword. Told her never to try it again. These memories, they're intense. Do you wish to continue? So we have one more left. I have more to say. Then please do. And there we go. It was in Rivia. The second war with Nilfgaard had just ended. There was still tension in the air. For gods know what reason race riots erupted in the town. I tried to do something, but couldn't stop a riled crowd. A boy with a pitchfork. He ran it right through my gut. Jennifer lay dying as well. Siri had us carried onto a boat. We sailed to a place where apple trees bloom eternal. She left us there. That was the last time I saw her. You claim the woman has abilities. Tell me about them. So that's of course not all of the story, but uh, it's some of the most important bits. So, the child of the Elder Blood. She's a child of the Elder Blood. A descendant of Bloody Falker. The rebel burned at the stake. The prophecies claim the world's destroyer will be born of the Firebrand's cursed blood. Pure legend. No one a legend transforms into prophecy. When it gains believers. I think you're right to be reticent in talking about the woman. I see. Do you wish to say more? And again, we'll speak about everything. Yeah, there's something else. They call Ciri the Lady of Space and Time. Once I asked Yennefer why, she... travels between worlds. <sighs> Turns out I don't know how to talk about it. Didn't really understand much of what Yen told me. I just know there's more to it than traveling to different places. And that Ciri carries immense power in her blood. I see. Do you wish to say more? And then the final bit about Ciri not being able to yeah, control her there's power. something else. I remember Ciri having trouble controlling her abilities. Yennefer tried to teach her to cast simple spells, and Ciri destroyed a shed near the temple where they were. Really upset her, but it was just an old shed. I know it took her a while to gain control, and frankly, I doubt she controls her abilities fully to this day. I see. Do you wish to say more? Uh, I think no. that's all. Can we start? Naturally. I knew you cared about her. But your tone, the emotions you so carefully conceal. Let's continue, please. Make yourself comfortable and try to relax. You must take my hand and talk with Siri. Tell me where you think she might be. Who could be at her side? Mm -hmm. If Siri couldn't find me, I'm sure she would have looked for another friend. Who do you mean? Yeah, there's only one guy that would probably be in Novigrad. She wouldn't su suspect Yennefer and Triss to be here. So let's try Dandelion. Maybe Dandelion. They liked each other a lot. So here we go. With your golden boots in the bed, Geralt. God damn it. And there we have Dear Dandelion. So 
also pretty mysterious, Dandelion talking to a swallow, but since we already know that Ciri's name in Elven means swallow, we can assume that this stream just depicts Ciri as a swallow in this case. And that was a big explosion. the dreams can multiply. Show the past as well as the future. The swallow. It symbolizes Ciri. She contacted Dandelion. I didn't know he was in town. The poet? Heard about him. Someone left him the Rosemary and Time in their will. The Rosemary and Time? Where's that? As you enter the city through the red light district, you come upon a bridge. The Rosemary is just past it. So it's a and whore house. inherited a brothel? So I've heard. Interesting. So thank you for your help, Corrine. Thanks for your help. Good luck, Witcher. I hope you find your Siri. Yeah, we hope that as well. So that concludes... ...this Novigrad dreaming quests. <laughs> so let's get back outside. We get a new quest, Broken Flowers, hinting at the Rosemary and Time. But before we go towards that, we're gonna end it here in this beautiful city. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you liked it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. So I thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video stream. Goodbye!